funeral and memorial service, we still can't believe you are gone. We missed you. There are no goodbyes from us. Wherever you are, you will always be in our hearts. We strongly believe anything you lose comes around in another form. You are a brother, not by choice, but by nature. And we could not have chosen a better one because you are the best. Thank you for everything. Bracken, the rest of the world. Bracken, the pass of Thank you. Amen. Okay. We feel something in the game, and I can see now the kind of truth. I'm a happy person. Oh, but I'm not a man of SEC. Spare your life. 
His will has been prevailed over our wishes. And we believe you are in a good place right now. The entire congregation of the church and people of all ages are encouraged by your sorrow and the commitment you show in your service to God before your demise. We know many people have questions to ask God. Why the righteous is taken suddenly from us? However, as believers, we are mindful of the words of God in Isaiah chapter 57 verse 1, which teaches us that the righteous perishes and no man takes it to heart. Merciful men are taken away, whilst no one considers that the righteous is taken away from evil. In this, in all these things, we are comforted that our brother has gone to his maker, our Lord, where we call it home. Continue to rest in perfect peace, brother Ken. Amen. If we leave, we leave for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. So, whether we leave or die, we belong to the Lord. This is Romans 14, verse 8. It is with deep, half full of pain, with sorrow, that we stand here today, not of this soul, our dear son. And we truly really love so much so that the world will know his greatness, his advantage, but to mourn his departed soul. Our assembly here today has certainly clamors the pain, frustration, and perpetual sorrow that we can never get over as a result of the death of our beloved Father, whose remains are motionless laying right here before us all. This is because we have forever lost an irreplaceable and our adorable father, whose love for his children has not just been great, but also been behind. The news of her sudden death after that short illness got us completely devastated as we passed through our signs with an inestimable shock. In fact, we struggled to believe because though death is inevitable, we never anticipated that we were going to visit this world at this time when we truly need you the most. Daddy, having a father full of passion and love for us as children is the greatest memory that we will forever stand to you as we pay, for, pay homage to your departed soul. Daddy, we never waited till you told us that you didn't love us because you always demonstrated a true father's love. And indeed, your name represented the meaning of love in our hearts. Your shock, but the worst counseling was always enough to light up our entire day while 
revolutionary measures have always strengthened our part in that result. Your daughter's glory, in particular, called you sweetheart because you gave true meaning to the saying that a girl's first true love is her father. When she started working and would pay school fees for advanced you still regarded that as a responsibility and assisted her to pay the fees always. As we pay our last respect to you today, you still remain our first love and hero because you meant so much to us and your passion and affection were always with us in every space and time more than what every good father would offer his children. We did almost everything together with you in a manner not only a true father like you could tolerate while you also nurtured us to be very disciplined. Daddy, 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 please kindly respond because we are not strangers. Gloria, Terry, Akasi, Nanaji, Junior, Junior Kennedy, and Jamie are all here. Daddy, these are the voices of your children. So please, don't keep a definite silence today because you always respond to us anytime we call. But you are unfortunately breaking our hearts the more as you lie in loud silence and cannot respond to us. Or Mary, Julian, Kenneth, and Jamie should not have felt the pains of your existence. So much because we are still too young to understand the dynamics of life. But I, I must admit that even Jamie, our youngest brother, often shows signs of his father whenever your name is mentioned. Though you love us with passion, you never hesitated to put us right whenever we went wrong. And the reasons, as you always explain, were meant to ensure that. We became responsible children so that we will be useful to society in the nearest future. And we are proud to say that we have never deviated from this greatest wish of yours. The impact of your high levels of discipline, measures, and benefits have been phenomenal in our lives today. We will continue to uphold whatever principles that we stood for and wanted us to be. That our hearts will be filled with sorrow whenever we see a father playing with children anymore. In fact, only God knows how long we will continue to get to my heart anytime we hear the shout of a name that is in the world. Because that, that alone will bring back the memory and the love we share together. We will forever miss you as a wonderful father, full of love and passion. To us, you have no business to visit the world today. But God, your Father in heaven, always knows best as always. That's why you have to live with us today. Then we pray to you, then we pray to you, then we pray to you, then we we are calling the tribute from Kemis.
Mr. John Kennedy Amwa. He was with absolute, it was with absolute shock when we received the news of his passing. And for a young company whose superior direction rested on his shoulders, we were thrown into a state of disarray. Death has taken away a genuinely warm individual. More importantly, a loving husband and father and deprived so many others, including all of us, of, of a good friend, brother, counselor, benefactor, and director. While we mourn the loss of our first executive director, we pay tribute and celebrate a life that was well lived. A life committed to the cause of putting smiles on faces of all that came to him. A life that sought to do nothing but the good and the progress of humanity. Mr. Kennedy Amwa was appointed the first executive director of Chemist Group of Companies in the year 2020 a role he wholeheartedly accepted and stayed committed until his passing. Though his plan of directorship was short-lived, he made every frantic effort to ensure that a young company such as this one has been given directorship to will to see greater strikes. This made Brother Ken, as we affectionately called him, not relent on his effort to offer sound counsel that would steer all affairs of the company. And as a young company about to take full flight, we found these counsels and shared experiences as fountains of wisdom, which, which has helped the company to be put on the competitive pedestal even before it takes full flight. In the month of October 2021, Brother Ken visited Ghana and didn't waste time to come to inspect the new office and the company that was put in, in place to offer some further directions. As to how the work must be made and the progress is taken, he later returned to London. But with shock, we learned of his passing on the 10th of November 2021. The entire company was thrown into a state of disarray, as I said earlier. Life can be fleeting, but a life lived to the fullest stays in the fond memories. Brother Ken, through his decorum and grace, endeared himself to many. This is particularly a difficult and painful time for his family, and friends, and comrades, and all the loved ones for us as a company. We are still in state of confusion, but with the hope of resurrection, we strongly believe that our first executive director has found peaceful rest in the bosom of his maker. Fair thee well, Brother Ken. Fair thee well, sir. Your legacy shall always be within Chemist Group. Nantiye, go, Gyojo. Amen. Praise the Lord. Last shoes from the window. My dearest husband, where are you going? Why have you left me so suddenly? Oh, my husband. <laughs> my husband and I started our journey in 2008. And the last 14 years has been filled with the most cherished and adorable moments. We have blessed with three boys. Nana, Julia and Jacob, who he cherished very much. He took me as a friend, a sister and a mother. He called me several nicknames. The most popular one was the office in which he would call me as soon as he walked through the door. Two nights ups and downs, 
He was there for me, and He never gave up on me. He brought me into my life from the day we started our journey. My husband returned from Ghana in July 2021 and complained of unusual symptoms. We sought medical assistance immediately, which resulted in my husband having to go through the procedure in October 2021. My husband's health deteriorated and he sadly gave up on the 10th of November 2021. The day before my birthday, a day I will never forget. I called you my director because you directed my affairs. I called you my hero because you never let me fall. You stood by me and I stood tall. I called you my best friend because we had no secrets. Your sudden departure without goodbye has left an empty space in our home. Never cries for you every day. My dearest, where do I go from here? Why do I tell our
It is no messrena with the protocols of Kakra, Afra, and the Kokoan Seminal, Na Ayobia, and Faso. Hallelujah.
case of Mahala, who were 895 years. And we die. Jebet lived 162 years and we got Enoch. After he begot Enoch, Jebet lived 800 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Jabbat were 962 years. And he died. He not lived 65 years. And he got Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, he not walk with God 300 years. And had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God. And he was not. For God took him. For God took him. Methuselah lived 187 years. And the God Lamach. After he begot Lamach, Methuselah lived 782 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Methuselah were 969 years. And he died. And he died. Lamach lived 182 years and had a son. And he called his name Noah, saying, This one will comfort us concerning our work and the toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord has cast. After he begot Noah, Lamach lived 595 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Lamech were 777 years. And he died. And Noah was 500 years old. And Noah begot Shah, Ham, and Japheth. Hallelujah. I said, I can hear you. Who said, I never be doing it? Well, one in part and the fifth of the world, I'm saying. And by the way, oh, yeah. And the fifth of the world, oh, yeah, and the son of the whole, now the kind. Now the kind of thing, and the fifth of the world, I'm saying, I feel here, oh, who be kind, and that my name, bah. But I'm coming now, we are the real yellow. Now I try and say, nah, oh. Nah, oh, nah, oh, hallelujah. But you're trying now about who will be one, you're from Enoch. Oh, no, no, what's not saying in Finchia, then you're saying, and about to say, oh, oh, Nabaka. Now, oh, oh, Nabaka, let you know, as I'm so to not say in Finchia or her in Yansa. Na sa bring you on the young coupon nan semi. Na ye no. On any dear way. Na go ye no. For he was not. If he said, O young coupon fa. Hallelujah. If he said, Kini na 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 you know that you have been to some cup of pump and I'm with you. Let me catch you. So, the story tells us that Adam, who was created by God, in fact, some of the story is not in because we know of Cain and Abel. And we don't know when Adam gave birth to Cain and Abel. And the other Moses started from after the death of Abel and came as being burned by God. And then Adam 
documented it. So we know that Adam was more than his age. In fact, he may be the most oldest person ever lived. Because we don't know when he sinned and when death came. But let's take it from the time of sex. The Bible says that Adam lived all together. Let me check the age proper. 930 years. 930 years. So probably Adam lived more than a thousand years. That is a millennium. How can a person live a thousand years and above? What for? Hallelujah. This Adam had no father, no mother. He was created. He did not come from the womb. He was created. But because of sin, he lived probably over a thousand years. If we are considering the time he was with God, before Eve was created, then they gave birth to Cain and then to Abel, and then Cain killed Abel. We don't know. When we go to heaven, we must ask Adam, Adam, so how old were you? What is your real age? However, from the time of saints, all together it was 930 years. And if somebody lived 930 years, then the person is almost becoming like God. It seems like he will not die. But the Bible says that he died. Adam died. And then the next man after Adam said, also lived 912 years. This is a lot of years. And Seth also died. And then he continued to say that the next one of the set was Enoch. And Enoch also lived 905 years. And he died. And then the next one is Canaan. And Canaan also lived 910 years. And the Bible says he died. And then Mahalara also lived. We are not saving 85, 95, 112. We are talking about 900. Ah, look of what you open. <laughs> we are living too long to be true. But one thing is always true that they die. Hallelujah. They live long, yet they die. And then the next one is called Jerry. And for Jerry, he lived 962 years. 962 years. And the Bible says that he died. And this Jerry gave birth to Enoch. So the father lived 962. And then the son, when he was 65, he married. He had his first son, and he called him Matusala. And we know that Matusala is the person who lived more 969 years after Matusala. 969. Apart from Adam, Matusala is the champion on the planet. He lived 969. And the man you see But Enoch lived 65 and had met you, son. And after he has lived 65 years, the Bible says that he walked with God. You see, he decided to walk with God. It was a decision that he made. All of them before him at the same time, the same opportunity, the same everything to make that decision that I will walk with God. But none of them walked with God. And they were waiting. They were just living. But this man lived. And he decided that I will walk with God. And so he walked with God. And he lived 300 years more. Whilst Adam 
lived more than a thousand. If he lived 365, it means it's one third of what Adam had. Methuselah lived 969. He lived 365. It's almost another one third. And if you are just considering it, it will sound like, why is it that they that did not work with God, they live longer? But they that work with God, but he that work with God, he lives short. Beloved, it's not how long you live, but it's the decision that you make in this life. I said it's not how long you live. It's not how many years that you live that matters, but the decision that you make in this life. Adam had the best opportunity never to die, but to live forever. Because he had the fruit of that tree for life and death. And both fruits were there. But he decided to eat the fruit that leads to death. And by disobedience, he was separated from God. And definitely Adam died that day. So it's not how long you live in this physical body. But the problem is, have you made the right decision? Life is about decision. What is your decision this morning? For Adam, he did not make that decision. His choice was that which leads to death. And all the others that followed him, they decided to make wrong decision after wrong decision. Because none of them decided to work with God. Even though they were living wrong, they did not make this decision. And then this boy was born, Enoch. He made the decision. And the decision was, I have decided to walk with God. And as he walked with God, he walked with God for 300 years. And then God took him. Church, if you will make the right decision today, it is unfortunate that our brother has died early. Because if I am going to live 162 years, and my brother is 54. He's not just one third of my age. And if you want to live 300 years, and our brother Kennedy has been called to glory at the age 54, it looks like our brother has lived just a little fraction, one fifth of your age. It doesn't sound fair. It's like this life is cut short. But you see, life is never cut short. Life is about decision. And a man has made the decision to walk with God. Because whether you like it or not, you will die. Hallelujah. You will die. So the death that you God says, and he died, and he died, and he died, and he died. So shall you also die. What is your decision? What decision have you made in life? Have you made a decision to walk with God? Do you want to be like Enoch? Then you have to make the decision to walk with God. Because when you walk with God, if you don't die, you are taken. Hallelujah. The Bible says, for God took you. So I know that God is going to take somebody. When I am down there, and I am led here. I want you to know that I am not there. But God has taken me. Because I have made the decision to work with God. What will we say when that day comes? When you are laid here. Today is our brother Kennedy. Tomorrow it will be me. But the question is, will you be laying here dead? Or you will be letting me get taken. I want to be taken. So I have made the decision to walk with God. So pastor, what does it mean to walk with God? What it means to walk with God is to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Is to believe in the testimony of God. That God has given us life. And the life is in the Son Jesus Christ. He who believe in him have life. And he who does not believe in him does not have life. Because he has made God out to be a liar. He is already condemned. 
You can live 969 and you will die condemned. But you can also live short and you will die taken because you have made the decision to walk with God. What is your decision this morning? What decision have you made in life? It doesn't matter any good that you do on this planet. You can create and invent everything. But the truth is, you will die. And when you die, none of these things can save you. There is God who saves and there is God who can take you. And I want to be taken. So, when we read from Luke chapter 16, there was a rich man who lived lost And the Bible says that he fed sumptuously. And I like that English word, he fed sumptuously. You see, when we say that somebody fed sumptuously, it's not just how nice or delicious the food is. But it's even how the table is set. It's how the servants serve him. The kind of cutlery he used. The kind of flowers and the grains and everything on the table. All that to make a food sumptuous. Your food may be tasting the best on the planet. But if your restaurant is not neat, who will come to eat? Who will come to feast? But if you have a nice table and everything set, uh, ever since I came here, I've come to know that in England, when you go to the restaurant, there are some names for four. You don't know the name, and the names sound very Spanish. Sometimes South American, sometimes uh, the name is hardly to pronounce. Something, something, chicken and dollar When you hear the name, you are thinking it's going to be fabulous. But they bring it to you, and it's like, oh, is that all? Oh. And sometimes you see the price and you think it's going to be big and the camera is very small. So you are not sure. You need access and you need access in order to fill your belly. But this rich man, Bible says, he fed sumptuously. And it was so sumptuous set that even the crumbles from his table was the main meal for the beggar Lazarus. If you will not get that, imagine. It means that the man really lived well and he fed well. And it means he was rich. And this poor man Lazarus had no less, had no uh, uh, insurance, had insurance. He had some wounds, but the only help he can get. Because he's rich, he could afford his tomb, he could afford everything, and he was married as a celebrity with glory. But then Lazarus died, and we don't know what happened. All we need is, and then the angels of God took him to the bosom of Abraham. He had nobody in him to bury him. You see, it's not how nice you are buried, it's not how good your grave is. You can buy this whole room and make it your graveyard, but it takes nothing in this life. The most important decision you can make is not the size of your grave, it's not the quality of your coffin, it's not that insurance for your barrier, but it's the decision to walk with God. Have you decided to walk with God? Or you have decided to live your own life? Don't be like others. Don't be like Saint. Don't be like Enosh. Don't be like Janet. Don't be like Methuselah. Don't be like Maharala. Don't be like these people who lived for many years but made the wrong decision so they died. The die means that they were dead and they were buried. But God did not take them. It means they perish as they die. You don't have to live to die. There is a decision to make this morning. You can live, and even when you die, you are not dead because angels will take you. Hallelujah. Angels will carry you to a resting place. I pray that your soul will find a resting place in our Lord Jesus Christ. So if you are here today and you don't know Jesus, 
as you will not ever say it, then you have not made the right decision. And Cynthia, I want to say that, yes, our brother Kennedy has made very short life, 54. But if he made the right decision to walk with God, then he is taken. He is just like Enoch. Because today people live 100 years. If you get 100 years, the queen will send you a card in England. In Africa, you don't get anything from the president. But here, the queen will send you great. Because you've had a century. And some people are 102, 118, 136, wonderful. But he is just 54. But I want you to be sure that if your husband really made the decision to work with God, that is why he has been brought here today. Then his life is not sure. Because God has taken him. The quality of life is not how long you live, it's the decision you make when it comes to you. So if you have not made this decision, then this is your opportunity. Make this decision to work with God so that you will not die. And then you will say that you live this years and you die. I don't want to die for the church to say that you had a pastor called Pastor Abba. He lived 182 years. His wife lived 182 years. We died the same day. And that is it. It's not a good story for me. I want my story to be that I was here and I was taken by God. Will God take you? If Jesus is to come today, will he take you? Or he will leave you to die? Think about this. If you don't know Jesus, then you are living to die. But if you know him, then you are living to be taken. It's two choices. It's two decisions. You have to make the one. Which one are you taking today? As I am calling you, do you want to have Jesus? Do you want to have him as your Lord and your Savior? So that even if you die, you are not just dead, but you are taken. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided not to follow Jesus. No turning back. If you are here.
No time is bad. No time is bad. Too many days, and it's too free. Am I able to also have a kind answer? Why is Mother Canadian? I'm not to the answer. No, I'm not sure. The Papa Amoa Ewaha. Now, that's a joke. No, I'm not. The Papa Peter Ewaha. Now, the cars are going to be watched here. Of America, so I can do book your work and so I have a Miss Ewa and see you here. Nanny Aunt Evelyn and so Ewa. Now, Mr. and Mrs. Adjiman, our end of uncle in America, and sir, all the way from the United States of America, the Maunina Akaba. Please shall we be on our feet, sir? Yep, yeah, and we'll soon. The man too far at the end. Now, yes, see, man, and now your time, you know, is too short. And the big best said, said, who drew her no one? And tell them now, don't waste time and don't pause. Amen. Tell my to follow. Amen. Now, your picture is now what I'm saying. We will start from with the pastor's not a shame here. Now, in the night of the future, I will swear. What a glory shines on our way. I will do His will. In the light, in the dark, in the dark, and we know.
Não foi da menção de Timor, foi da menção de Timor. A menção de um menino morreu no calor. Minha mãe estava sentindo. Eu recebi minha boca e me veio a nossa senhora. Minha boca era a mãe. Mas eu não vou comer minha boca. Eu me amo. Eu me amo, Jesus. Bom, 
Mais il est bon de Dieu. Souvent, on ne peut pas faire des enfants à nous. Il y a un peu de temps. 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 Amen.